that took uh, 31 minutes Oops. and did the whole thing in single run with a 2.4 mil corn bit um, as you could see by the um, bits before I cleaned this up it did make quite a mess um, because I didn't have my uh, dust shoe with the you know the uh, skirt on it um, just so I could see what was going on um, but yeah I mean overall though I mean I think that actually turned out pretty well I think all the hole sizes turned out like they look pretty good let me see if I can find a Okay, I think that's an M5. Yep, nice, perfect. Uh, let's see if we can find an M4. This all in here a minute ago. Okay, that's an M4. So these are M4. Yep, beautiful. And M3. Yep, lovely. And over here. Yeah, that's absolutely spot on. Yep. So um, you probably noticed it was going incredibly slowly um, when it was doing the holes, and that was to actually get dimensional accuracy. I actually slowed it down to 250 millimeters a minute, um, which is pretty damn tedious. But um, yeah, you know, the result is I've actually got accurate holes that I don't need to re-drill. So I'm pretty happy with that. The rest of that cutting was done at uh, 1,000 millimeters a minute. Um, and, uh, and I think it was about 20,000 RPM. I uh, did realize that I'd forgotten to actually turn up the, um, the actual RPM for the, uh, for the larger cuts. Um, and so yeah, I ended up just cranking that up to uh, 155%, which I'm not quite sure what that is in real terms, but it, it um, yeah, definitely, definitely worked I think so yeah all good um, yeah now I've just got to uh, install it on my 3d printer so here you can see the bed carriage actually installed and I've just sat the little aluminium spaces that actually support the bed on there just for, for reference and yeah so basically you can see that there's uh, eight M5 bolts that actually screw into aluminium blocks uh, that then bolt onto the um, carriages which use M3 so that basically just raises the height up and you can see my accelerometer at the back there and the cable chain um, basically everything's fitted here that's all, all working and yeah it's running really nicely um, moves up and down really smoothly it's very thermally stable uh, and it does a lot better job than my old um, aluminium carriage was doing because I'd modified it quite a few times and so it was pretty beat up uh, and it had warped um, and it was only about three mil thick so yeah this is all uh, fully installed now you can see a uh, cable chain at the back there um, and you can see my previous aluminium mounts that I've used to actually hold up the uh, the linear rails uh, so yeah very very happy with how this turned out um, it looks really really schmick uh, and it's been doing a fantastic job. So yeah, I'm thrilled Ladies and gentlemen This is just a bit of a sneak peek on my current project As most of you have probably figured out by now. I do have a pretty strong case of upgrade itis uh, So yeah, as you can see I'm making this very nice proper electronics enclosure for my CNC machine And I've made quite a lot of progress as you can see I've got the e-stop switch here which uh, I'll probably also use as an on-off, maybe. I've got a uh, breaker down here, which uh, I think it's either 10 or 15 amps, I forget which. I've got some intake cooling ex uh, exhaust cool, uh, vent. I've got my SKR, um, sorry, not SKR, my uh, MKS uh, DLC 32 2.1 controller. Uh, some TMC 2160-OC driver boards, which are, I think, good for about 5 amps, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, I've got a nice 36-volt uh, power supply, 350 watts, uh, I think it is, uh, and a 1.5 kilowatt VFD. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's all coming on quite nicely, and so you're probably wondering, okay, why have you got a VFD? Well, the answer is really straightforward. I now have a 1.5 kilowatt spindle. Uh, so 
yeah, I'm currently in the process of rewiring everything. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's just a 1.5 kilowatt air-cooled unit. Really can't be bothered screwing about with uh, water cooling. I don't need it. I don't really have any plans to cut steel. Aluminium is about it for me, uh, for all my projects. Uh, and uh, and yeah, it's uh, ER11 uh, collet, um, which is good enough. Um, and yeah, this is a Jeep and I'm honestly pretty impressed with it. Like, as you can see, the actual collet nut is balanced, which, you know, very, uh, very impressed with that. Um, and the, the motion, or the, uh, the feel of the bearings and everything is just so smooth. So yeah, very impressed with this little machine. So all up, I think it was about 300 Australian dollars, roughly shipped um, for, for, the, for the spindle. And yeah, so that means, of course, I'm retiring my Makita um, with the uh, you know with the control units and all the rest of it. So I'm probably going to end up selling it with uh, with the gerbil speed. Um, it's just a lot easier uh, to sell it as as is. Um, yeah, I, I don't um, I don't want to revert it to stock because you know I just don't really have a use for a regular palm router, um, and I'm sure somebody else would, uh, would probably get some good use out of it. Um, I really liked it, but I just found the runout was a little bit too much for my requirements. I, I really wanted to be able to do um, PCB prototyping, and it, the runout is just too much for doing good quality 0.2 millimeter tracks. Um, but apart from that. It's amazing, like it, you know, I've made a whole ton of carbon fiber uh, things out of it, as, as you will have seen earlier. Um, it does do a really good job. Um, so let me see if I've actually got, got my uh, prototype up here still. I think I do, yep. So I mean, this was obviously incorrect. Like I, I screwed it up and that was just because I got some of my dimensions wrong, but you know, that's four mil carbon fiber and it just you know, made that without any dramas whatsoever and very accurate. Um, it did exactly what I wanted it to do, um, apart from the fact that um, <laughs> I got my dimensions wrong and so the machine made exactly what uh, what I told it to make. But yeah, anyway, so that, that's my uh, current project is uh, is um, full electronics enclosure um, to uh, yeah, basically take my CNC machine to the next level. Um, and there'll probably be some ball screws to follow up as well. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there is actually quite a lot of wiring missing and I do have a uh, 12 volt DIN rail mounted um, uh, power supply for the, uh, uh, for the control board coming. Um, everything else is either mains 240 volt, um, like the 36 volt power supply and the VFD. Um, but yeah, 12 volt will be just for the controller and you know, accessories like the fan. So yeah, that, that's an update. Um, as you can see, you know, I, I do actually have a bunch of missing wires. Um, I have a bunch of um, sort of chain flex style uh, shielded cable on order. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think really the only other thing I might add is I might add a like a rotary on off switch here. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Um, yeah, hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed that little update. Um, thanks for watching. See you around guys.